Hi everybody, Joe here again. Thanks for joining me today. Now, on Technique Tuesday, I like to try and answer some questions that you've been asking. And one of the, well, it's not even a question. One of the comments that so many of you have told me is that you've bought the gel press. And here's Roland, our fabulous new round gel press. And what you've done is you've actually kept the gel press in its packet. Now, are you one of those ladies and gentlemen who've messaged me and said this? So today, really, I just want to come in and give you a, a couple of very quick, very simple uh, ways of making backgrounds. Really, I just want you to take the gel press out of its packet. And how many of us do that? We buy products, don't we? And they sit on the shelves. I'm sure it's not just me. And the crafters that I talk to at workshops and, and at shows, I think we're all the same. So to our gel press, when you take it out of the packet for the first time, don't discard the packaging because it's a really good way of keeping it safe. The gel press is a fabulous thing. It has got a really good memory. I'm just going to peel off the two little pieces of acetate. So be very careful if you place your gel press on a surface because you don't want it to be a surface say there's glitter on or um, a bumpy surface because the gel press will pick that up so for me I have one of our lovely Lavinia blocks and unfortunately with it being perspex you are going to see the reflection of my my light in the room on it so please just ignore that so for me I always place my gel press on an acrylic block and the other thing is I'm mindful when I finish to put it straight away and I'll tell you why because I don't know about you, I pile things up at the side and you, the last thing you want to do is put something on top because again you would mark your gel press and damage it. And for this my biggest tip is when you get your gel press out and you're going to have a play get yourself some card. So I've just got some sheets here, 7x7 seven seven multifarious card because once you start it is quite addictive and I well I just find I make background after background now very simply I'm going to come in inks there are so many different products you can use on a gel press so today we're keeping it really simple we're going back to basics and I'm going to come in with my elements inks you could use your distress oxide inks or your distress inks I'm going for the elements purely because they've got a higher pigment, less water content. So I will get less beading on my print. But, and that's what we're making, we're making prints. But you can use any of your dye-based ink pads for this technique. Now, I'm just going to brayer the ink on. Straight across like this, look. And then I'm going to come across this way. Just going to put a little bit more check I've got a good covering I'm not going to brayer any more than that if I was to keep brayering what would happen is I would actually take the ink off it would almost over blend it and you would have less ink on next thing I have my fan brush here in a pot of water look and I'm just going to tip the most off it wet little tip with your fan brush I put my brushes the first thing when I come into my craft room I pop them in a pot of water but I never have the water level above the metal here because if you do this is wood and it will split it will rot the reason brushes have metal here is so that you can leave them in water but as I say don't overfill your water pot because the last thing you want to do is split your beautiful Lavinia brushes now I'm going to tap the worst off just on the side of my pot and I'm simply just going to add some water here. That's all. Nothing difficult. We've got one ink on here and I'm just going to flick some water look. And just to show you, I've got that amount. And again, you can vary the amount of water you add. And all I'm going to do is bring my piece of card in, turn my plate over now this as well as it's great fun to watch I have to say but also I can place this I could do two gel press uh, prints if I want but I'm going for one I'm just going to go in the middle so I'm going to decide and put that there now here's the fun bit look depending how much pressure I put varies as to the pattern I get so look if I press and if I show you 
you see how that is just reacting and again I'm just a big kid I love to watch this now how simple was that I'm actually not going to press I like those bits left a bit whiter so I'm going to leave that I'm just going to lift it up peel that off and look now for me that is such a beautiful background so easy it'll dry more or less straight away that's just such fun, isn't it? Now, you could use lots of different ink pads. So let's come in with two colours. We're just going to mix it up a little bit. Nothing too difficult. Same colour with the blue. But I'm going to actually spray that across the top. Sort of come to about halfway down. And I'm going to, I've got a piece of card here and I'm just going to clean my brayer on this piece of card because guess what? This is going to be going in my journal. I've got to turn my block round. And again, I find it easier with it being on the acrylic block. Much easier for me to turn round. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And I'm just going to bring the green in now. Again, I'm working towards the middle. And then I'm just going to add a little bit deeper at the bottom. There we go. Again, nothing difficult, just two colours. And I didn't tell you the colours, did I? So this was Blue Lagoon and this is Bermuda. And again, I'm just going to clean my brayer. And I have to say, look at that already. Is it me? But I can see hills here. I can see the sky here. That's definitely going in my journal next week. Now, instead of adding water, I'm going to introduce my brush shell powders. Now, these are in my lovely little pixie pots. Now, with these, a few little tips. I name, I put the colour, a little label on the lid and on the side of my pot so I know what colour is in each pot. When I make a new mixture, I just tip enough powder to cover the base of the pot. Then I fill it to sort of four fifths with water. Now, this is just a guide. Don't overstress. You can always add a little bit more water or a little bit more powder. And the other little tip, these lids fit snug. They are very tight, which is good because I take this with me. It travels to shows, to workshops and, you know, touch wood, touch my head. Um, I've never spilt any yet, but I find them quite tricky to get off. But if you pop the little um, lip to the outside, for me, I find it easier to get the lid off because it's on the outside. Now, actually, that one I've just opened, that's the purple. That's a good thing to show you. If ever they dry up like that, don't worry. I will just add a little bit of water to that. Just a little that will rejuvenate the crystals that are there. And that will give me a little bit more before I need to mix any more. So again, when I put the lids on, look, I would always put this lip on the outside so it's easier for me. Now, back to our piece. Again, fan brush in my water pot, tap some off, and I'm going to come into my yellow first. And I always turn, twist my fan brush because I find it just helps if the crystals had almost weren't quite dissolved. And then I'm going to put some yellow around the base here. And then back in my brush, in the water pot, just to clean off. Again, tap off the most. Don't want too much. And then into this is, I think this is turquoise. Let me read the side. And again, I'm just going to tap some of this round the top. So we're using two colours of ink this time. And instead of water, we're using two colours of brush oil powder already mixed with water. And we're just going to do the same as we did before. She says if I can get a piece of card. And I'll just slide this to the side a little. So I can decide, again, where I want this. And I sort of want to have that sort of shape. And in the middle, and again, press down, look. And watch that magic happen. 
So when you think you have got the possibilities, all the different ink colours you've got, the different ink pads, you've got water, you've got brush oil powders. Don't worry about that, I'll blend some ink round, we'll get rid of that. Now, to clean my gel press, all I do is take a piece of copy paper and that's all it needs to clean it. Now that, you will get a ghost print and I often use these for, the, for inserts. So you could have cleaned that on a piece of card if you'd wanted and that would have given you an insert because you could stamp a sentiment over that. But that's all that's needed and my gel press will go back into its box. And if I bring in our two designs, I'm just going to move my brush oil pots to the side. So this was the one we did just with water. So that's simply ink and water. And this is two colours of ink and our our brush oil powders. But how lovely and simple is that? So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I really, really hope that you will get your gel press. If you're one of those ladies or gentlemen that's bought a gel press and not got it out, please have a little play. That was so simple. But these are dry now and I can't wait to stamp on them. And remember, we've got different shapes. So this is the circle. We've got the oval, the oblong, haven't we? Almost like a DL shape. What's it called? Bob Long. Do you know, the hardest bit for me is remembering the names. We've got square. You know, so many possibilities. And once you start, as I say, this is just the basics. I'll be coming back with another one to show you how we use stencils. And then how we do stamp it on the gel press. And we'll build up our arsenal of ways of, of just creating these fabulous backgrounds. So I'm just going to carry on, I think, and create some more. So I hope you have fun. Do lots of creating and share with each other. You share them on Facebook. We love to see your makes. And then next week, I'm thinking, let's stamp these up and add them into our journal. And especially this. This is definitely going in my journal. But I have to say, just got to add a few little. You know when you just need to do something? I need to add some water splats in that sky. And then when that's dry, that's definitely going in my journal. So you take care, everybody. Thanks as always for joining me. Love and hugs to you all. See you next week. Bye for now.